Hi guys, welcome to part 3 of our Nintendo 64 Raspberry Pi project. In this video we will be setting up the controller within emulation station slash retro pi as well as loading games onto our Raspberry Pi. So to start with, in order to load the games, or excuse me, in order to set up the controller on the retro pi, I made myself this spreadsheet, which basically I just recorded all of the buttons that are on a Nintendo 64 controller, as well as uh, the joystick will have a dead zone and a range, and we will get to that later. So, <clears throat> as for loading the games, we take our USB drive and throw it into our computer here and this pops up which is the folder of the USB drive and we have to make a folder called RetroPy which I've already made it in all lowercase letters and this is where uh, once you put the USB into your Raspberry Pi uh, you'll see a green light start blinking around and as soon as that's done blinking you bring it back to your computer and uh, obviously put it in a USB drive and it'll make a file system of a bunch of different folders where uh, it'll, it'll be your emulators like your Nintendo and N64 etc and then you take your games that you acquired legally backed up from games that you legally own and just copy them into the folders that the retro or that the Raspberry Pi created so with all of that, let's get to the Pi itself. So I've got my Raspberry Pi here. You can see that it's turned on. I got the red light right there. And I'm going to jam our USB stick into one of these USB drives. And the green light is starting to flash. And whenever that's done, and we can pull this out. if it ever finishes and boom so we can just pull that out now and take it back to our computer and uh, put our games on the folders alright so back at our main computer we're going to take our USB drive and put it in the USB slot and again this window should just pop up for me and uh, we'll go to our RetroPie folder. You see it created these three folders for us. We want to go into ROMs. And uh, we have all of these emulators to choose from. But I'm mostly interested in Nintendo 64. So we'll go there. And I want to open up another instance of this. Because I want to find the games that I uh, backed up legally. And just copy all of these into the N64 folder. And I also have some NES games, so I'll copy those as well into my NES folder once these load. Alright, and back to the Pi we go. So now we have to put our USB stick back into our Raspberry Pi and again the green light will start blinking away and once that's done blinking away all of our games will be on our system. So now that we got our ROMs loaded we're gonna go to the Nintendo 64 and start a game just to get uh, Moving 64 running for the first time. So select emulator. We're going to go with Rice. Rice is usually a good one. And then uh, let's just launch it from here. See what happens. See if we can even control the game. Or if it runs at all. 007. Perfect. Uh, start button's working. So. 
joystick's working. Uh, the buttons are working, but let's let's go uh, back to the terminal. My help escaping out of the game in Alta, excuse me, F4. We're on our retro pie, and we're going to set up our joystick or our uh, controller now. So first thing we need to do is run JS test. So JS test dev input slash JS zero enter. Oh my gosh. And this is going to be fun to run like this. And we uh, hit each individual button and look at all these offs when you hit the button one of them will turn on so like I'm gonna hit the left trigger and you can see that button number six turned on so we're gonna record six for button number or for uh, the left trigger and then the right trigger should be seven yep and then I'll hit the Z button which is eight and the start button is nine B button is 2, A button is 1, up, oh, up is 12, left is 15, down is 14, right is 13, uh, C up is, see, the 2, and it's a negative, so you want to copy negative 2. So C down is positive to you. C left is negative three, uh, excuse me, positive three. So C right will be negative three. And then the joystick up is negative one. So down should be, should be positive one. Let's see. And then left is negative zero, and right is positive zero. So to exit out of there, we hit Control C, and then we go to JS Cal hyphen C. This will be to joy, uh, calibrate the joystick. Dev input uh, JS zero. Enter. Okay, so access zero, you want to move to the minimum position. So all the way left, and hit A, and then uh, center the joystick and hit A, and then all the way right and hit A. Access one, minimum is up, hit A, center A, down A. Um, access two was C up, so A. Uh, center so pushing nothing a and then C down a and then it was C right for access 3 a nothing a C left a and then a for everything else and so now we can go back to our JS test and record our dead zones JS test dev input JS 0 so you can see our uh, our dead zone, and you know this is no longer zero. We got 372 and 372, so our dead zone is 372. And then if you hit the joystick in any direction, you know you get 32, 7, 67, approximately the same. 32, 7, 67, 32, 7, 67. That's our range. So we want to record those as our dead zone range. And then we can cancel out of that again. And now we need to um, go to CD opt. CD retro pie. There we go. CD configs. Learn how to spell. 
uh, CDN64. All right, sudo, we need to configure our input auto config. So input auto config right here. So sudo nano input auto config dot ini. All right, and we're gonna make sure our numlock is on. So we're gonna scroll down to um, for me, it's Huija USB Gamepad Start. It would have told you what the name of the control pad was when you when uh, you held a button on a joypad screen. Um, and we're going to change all of these to what we found in JS Test. So our dead zone was way smaller than this. It was 372. 372. Our uh, peak was 32,767. That's pretty close. I doubt changing this is going to make a difference, but I'm going to change it anyways. Okay, plugged is true. Blah blah blah. Mouse is false. Mem pack and rumble pack. We're going to leave blank. Okay, and then I'm just going to delete all of these and start my own. Okay, so we have D pad R for D pad right was button 13. D pad L for left was button 15. And I'll just go through this, fast forward through it, and uh, I will uh, include my setup in the video description down below. So I'm just going to finish this off video or fast forward it. All right, so once we're done uh, filling out all of this, we're going to hit Control X to uh, exit out of this, Y to save it, and then enter. So now that we've changed our settings and in input auto config, let's test it against uh, Mupin64 Plus up here to make sure we have the same settings. So sudo nano mupin. 64 plus dot cfg and we'll scroll down until we find our controller right here input sdl control one so you want to make sure that all of our settings are the same 13 you know d-pad right's 13 left is 15 etc etc check everything against um, your input auto config and also check for a controller too. And then once that's all done, we'll just control X to get out of there. And there we go. In this video, we've set up our controller on a Raspberry Pi as well as loaded games for Emulation Station. And I will put my settings in the video description down below. If you liked the video, <clears throat> or you're interested in the Raspberry Pi projects or Nintendo 64, please leave a like and subscribe. If not, don't. Either way, feel free to leave some comments, and uh, I will see you in future videos.